Good morning and welcome to this, the virtual bridge for Friday the 18th of December. Today we are lucky to have Margaret Locke of Dumfries and Galloway College. Margaret's going to be taking us through capturing practical evidence using a Moodle database. Um, so this is going to be really useful for practitioners who deliver in a realistic work environment where a product or what of work may cover many of the available outcomes. You could probably tell I was reading that little bit there. So I will pass on to the expert here. Margaret, could you please start your presentation? Yeah, thank you for joining us today. I'm Margaret Locke. I work in Freeston Gallery College and I work in the, the hairdressing department. Um, over the years, we've worked with delivered SQA qualifications and um, then CEs, and it's capturing practical evidence that um, is a huge part of our job. So usually we get an aspen. I'm screen sharing just now, and I hope you can all see. This is an aspen. This is a practical element of the asp. So for this particular unit, which is a hair colouring unit, the students have to complete um, four practical assessments on clients. So what we used to do in the olden days is we used to have an old camera and we'd capture pictures. I would then print off all these pictures, cut them out for the appropriate student, hand them over to the students, and the students would complete this um, consultation sheet on paper and we'd pin the pictures to it. I'd end up with a whole pack of these as assessment materials. It cost a lot of money, obviously, because you had your cameras, you know, your, 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 your prints and um, paper. So we decided to, um, about seven, eight years ago, we decided to try and run up with a paperless course. So what we did was we spoke to the IS team to see how we could make this electronic. We wanted it on all devices so the students could sit with their phones because I don't know about you, but it's a real struggle getting them off the phones. So I thought, why not embrace it and get them to use their phones? So when a client comes in and they're aiming for assessment, they would sit with their phones, they would sit with a database up, the databases were produced to, to cover this evidence and they'd be filling in the database with the client as the client was in front of them. Really handy as well because they can take their own picture evidence and just upload it to areas and databases. Okay, so databases are, it is a resource, sorry, it is an activity in Moodle, so it's a free activity in Moodle. So what we have done is we've attached it to our Moodle in here and we've got our landing pages with, well, I'm going to struggle to move this here. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so what did we do? We decided to create um, databases. So a database is, base is, a, is, an activity, is an activity in Moodles, and it did take quite a wee bit of, of time because I'd never been involved in databases. So when you click on databases, you come to this page, and you can see here you've got to create templates and fields. And once you create one database, you can set it up as a preset and use it throughout different units. Okay. So we went in and um, we decided to mirror the ASP as much as we could, obviously, for moderation and EV purposes. So we went and created the databases. So the students click on database, they come to a page like this, and they'll add an entry. When they add an entry, um, they come to a page like this. So this is the database that we've produced. So it views really well on a tablet or on a mobile or on a PC. So they can just go in. We've added a uh, text boxes so they can add various information, date field, tick boxes. Students like it. They find it particularly easy, particularly the students who are terrified with anything with a pen and a piece of paper. Um, we've put in drop down menus just to try and make it a bit interesting. Everything in here covers the criteria of the unit. So they'll just click on through, they upload their before images, their during images, their after images, so that captures really, really good practical evidence. Um, further down here, we have an area where they evaluate their work. Um, so once they've completed, the work right the way down here, and they've got to evaluate. We put a field in here for evaluation. Uh, that means that the students who are not keen to type or write anything, they can actually put audio in, so they can just click on here and attach audio feedback. Um, as lecturers as well, we have an area where we give feedback, and again, we can tick a box and just give audio feedback as well. Some of the students like the audio feedback, some aren't so sure. And it's really easy to do it on a mobile device because they're just clicking on the button, talking right into their phone. It is so easy. So we have students who do a combination of written, some do audio. So if they do right, here's one of our students, a completed database. So it views like this, just move this out of the way. Here you are, all the information. The grayed out area at the top and the grayed out area at the bottom is that it's mandatory. It crosses over all units. And the color area in the middle is specific to the 
particular unit that we're using this for assessment purposes for. So you can see we've got pictures, all the information related to that assessment. Go down here and this student has evaluated by, by writing her evaluation in. If I click on another student who prefers to do evaluation by audio, you can see that it's just inserts there. I can click on that and it plays back her feedback to me. So it's a great way of capturing practical evidence. Okay, we have started to roll this out and I do have somewhere in here, um, I do have one that we've created for um, the catering department and it's a risk assessment. So the students have to do four risk assessments for a particular unit. So again, they'll click on the, the database tab in their unit and they'll go to add entry and it comes up with a sheet like this. This is the example. So they'll just go and click the boxes, telling us what the, what the, what the harm is, etc. And here the students, the, the, the staff then in the lecture feedback can go in and they can add their evaluation either by writing their evaluation or orally submitting feedback to the students. So it's a nice, quick, easy way to, to capture evidence. And we found as a team, the really good thing about this, it sits on a middle. So from a, a, an EV point of view or an internal moderation point of view, it can be moderated at any time because it's a live document. It's a completely paperless way of doing it. And um, all the staff can access students' work, see what's happening, see what the feedback is. So it's a really good, simple way to get access to moderation. I am 78 miles away from our main campus. We're in a satellite centre. So it's actually saved. I used to have to gather all my evidence together and post it up the road, you know, and then waiting it coming back. So that could take about a week, whereas now you just go into the system and we moderate everything just by clicking on some buttons. So. That's the databases. That's wonderful, Margaret. So what was the, why did you start doing this just now in 2020? Was it something that you'd planned to do? Was it brought forward by current circumstances? What was no. that? What was the we haven't just started doing it. We started to roll this out in hairdressing about, probably about seven, eight years ago when we decided to go for a paperless course. But we find now with COVID, um, People are wanting um, easy access to materials and you get more areas now coming and saying, can I get a database for X, Y, Z? And it fits really, really well for, for practical evidence. Okay, excellent. Uh, I will open it up to the floor if there's any questions, any observations that anyone wants to come in with just now. You can put some, I'll, we'll be checking the chat box here. I can see Kenji's got his hand up, of course, but let me just see if there's anyone else in the chat box, Kenji. Okay, Kenji, on you go. <laughs> well, oh, Gordon. Gordon, excellent. Gordon, if you want to come off mute, that'd be brilliant. Okay, I'll, I'll go before Kenji then. That, that means I'll actually get to say something. Um, Mark, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it, it's so simple, but so effective. H how did you manage uh, in terms of, putting the, the templates together so that the assessors could fill in there, but without the students being able to input stuff into those boxes. What, what was your process for managing that? What, what we do when we design it, we have, you can set up list te templates as well. So if I go in here and show you, so here's the tip. We've got different templates that you can send, set up. So if I just go in here, I can create a list template, single templates, add templates. So when I'm adding a template, what I do, here's a list template so I can um, attach my fields to this. So it's only the lecturers that see that part of the list template. But when we give feedback, you know, you're obviously wanting the students to see the feedback, et cetera. So um, we don't really separate it too much. You know, we, we, we give oral feedback anyway, because obviously they've got to know at the time whether they pass that practical assessment and you're telling them throughout the stages of it, you know, you're on track, keep going. Um, and then when they finish that practical assessment and if they passed it, we will see then upload it to LearnNet and LearnNet is our middle. So then we just actually access it, you know, down at the bottom, we've got a lecturer's field, put the information in and the students can view that as well. What we've also done as well, We've actually linked it right through to, we've graded it, we've put a grade in it in Moodle. So, and then we've added it to our course completion. So it makes up um, an additional really good checklist. And if I go in here, I'll just let you see. So here's one here. And it's a checklist. Now this is from my previous students last year. So every time I mark something off, 
um, as a complete um, database, it will automatically tick in the, the checkbox. So that's the database uh, symbol there. So I can go in at any time and see well, all students have finished their practical work. Um, I do have one here that's a current one on shampooing that I'm doing just now. And you can see I've got a lot of gaps. So a quick glance, I can see practically what students have to do. And when I work off a course completion like this, I can click on it here and it will take me straight to that database so I can then see if that student has uploaded to that database or not. Brilliant. So it's really easy to, to include it into your, to your course completion, your tracking. So from a lecture point of view, we all feel it's made our life so much easier. OK, the students get access to it. The students are more in control of it. You know, we give them a week to upload a practical assessment from passing it. So they've got a time frame of a week. So we say you have successfully passed that, that practical assessment. They have to submit their database with all the information and their evaluation within a time frame of a week. Then we have a week to go in and give them evaluation. It ticks it off and it's creating their checklist. And the students have access to their checklist as well on Moodle. So they can see at any time what has been accepted satisfactory and what hasn't. So from a lecturer's point of view, you know, you just go into your, your course completion and you can see who's outstanding. Where in the olden days, we'd have the packs with all the different students and we'd be counting assessments, you know, paper checklists. So on the whole, it's made everything an awful lot easier. Excellent. Just because um, you used the electronic tools correctly, I'm going to ask Jason to come in as he's raised his hand using the buttons. Feel free to do that, people, as well, if you wish, to say that you would like to speak, Jason. Uh, thank you very much. It's a quick question. Uh, to assist others that are taking up this uh, sort of idea, is there anything that you improved um, upon or you know you would have done differently from the start through till now? Um, well, I'm quite a, I'm the type of person that I learn by doing. So I possibly should have had a bit more research into creating templates, fields, and working with databases before I threw myself into it. The poor IS team, I think they were heart roasted with me. Get a lot of support from your IS department. I'm quite happy to help anyone. I've got some templates there. I'm unsure whether we're able to share them on Moodle with one another, but um, it does take a wee bit of time to, to work it out. But if you're used to working with databases, then it shouldn't be a problem. I had never worked with a database. So that, that's the only thing I would maybe do. I would maybe have taken my time and researched databases. Um, I didn't realise there were single databases and you know add databases. It did become a wee bit confusing to begin with, but... Um, on the goal, it was fairly easy to, to set up. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Kenji? Well, actually, I was going to ask about the, the potential to share um, the database templates, because I think you've done a lot of work. And I've, I've, I've seen those paper sets before, and they are massive. I mean, the amount of content that's there. So that, that seems like a pile of work that you've done that's already mapped to, to, to the outcomes that you need and the evidence that you need. So that it looks, it looks great. One, one thing I'm interested in, just as we're sharing our screen, could you sh um, show us the um, how it would look if you shrink your browser down to see what it would look like on a mobile? Because I'm interested to see how it presents on a smaller screen. So if you've got, yeah, that one, if you could just um, make the browser window slightly smaller. I should be able to drag that in, shouldn't I? Just I really, I've never seen this done on Moodle before. I don't see how it presents, but that's, it presents oh, so really well on a mobile. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, that's really good. And then the, the students just obviously save it. They can save it and view it or save it and add another. Um, and then when we go in and grade it, we, we'll grade it in edit, we'll, we'll give our feedback in edit mode and then we come out edit mode to grade it because we don't want to stay in edit mode because the students get access to edit mode. So outside edit mode, edit mode, we grade it in Moodle in the grade, you know, like just underneath I click a satisfactory and have it graded so it gives us that tick in the course completion. Right, excellent. And how, how have the other staff taken to it? Within the they all, they all, we've been using this now for about the last five, six years. And that actually is, is the staff that, that helped me to develop it because 
we introduced them with something more ba basic and then they would come back and say, Maggie, I want something more. I want, they were actually fed up with writing similar feedback to everyone. So you can see here in the lecture area below, I've now got um, a selecting uh, sort of the can select text, like it was completely to high standard, it was completely to an acceptable standard. So, so the lecturers now can go in and quickly tick the ones that are relevant to that student. So that came on the back of lecturers using it. So it's kind of evolving. With, with the, with That's the staff I mean, I think anything that makes life easier, especially when it comes to feedback as well, um, and, and making that workflow easier. So could you estimate how much time has been saved by adopting this process? Oh, loads of time. And it's not just the time, it's the students taking more ownership for, for, for their course and their assessments, you know, because they know where to access these. They, they just go ahead and once they pass the assessment, they're in control of their own photographs. Whereas we save loads of time because we used to take all the pictures, print them off, cut them out, allocate them to the students. And, you know, and the students now taking ownership, they know they have to take the before pictures for every client. They know they have to take their journey. They might not get it for assessment, but they still need to have those pictures available in case they meet this assessment standards. So it's taking ownership. Okay, great. I will uh, point out that Jamie was saying um, about uh, how much of a a hub of innovation that Hair and Beauty seems to be there with your CDN commended um, at the CDN Awards. So congratulations on that, Margaret. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And Gordon was also saying that once they start to use databases, then the majority of people didn't want to use forums again afterwards. Have you found the same? If you had to go back to the paper forums, do you think there would be a revolt? We use forums, but we use forums in a completely different way. Um, I think it's... I think it's, it's so much easier. Um, it depends what you're gathering evidence for. I mean, I'll use forms if I'm wanting like some feedback on a particular area from students, but because we are using this for assessment areas, I want each student's assessment in a different location rather than from the one form. Mm -hmm. You know how you're, you gather all the responses on the one form. So if you're working with, say, maybe 30 students, there's a lot of responses to manage. So it's actually easier. And the good thing about databases is, you know, like it's it's through the grade book and the course completion. So it's building up our, you know, our, our, um, our evidence for um, assessments. So. Excellent. And is there any, I think you mentioned another area of the college that was, you were also helping use it. Is it across many departments that are using We're, we're working with Caterin. Caterin are using it and we're also working with the build department and they're using it. Okay. And is there any type of course this would not suit? Is there anything that you could, is there any course you could say, well, that's not going to work for these people or this particular cohort? I don't know. I think it's just one of these things you'd have to try it and see. You know, whether the staff embrace it, whether the students embrace it. And I think it's all in the way that you sell it and the way you use it. It needs to be teamwork. Um, I think it's just planning ahead and seeing, well, what do you want from the database? You know, what can we get out of it? Because you've got to get something out of it for the, stu for the students and staff to be able to embrace it. So it's got to make life a bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't, I don't know any practical subject. You can see how we're using it to capture practical evidence. So I can't think of any area that you wouldn't be able to you know, use it to capture that evidence. Yeah, definitely. Jamie, I think you were looking to say something. Are you okay to speak? Yeah, it looks, uh, first of all, it looks really um, presentable with um, that theme, that responsive theme that obviously Kenji's experiment to resize it. I uh, was just going to hazard a guess, but the theme um, itself would be with the adaptable boost, if, if you know that. But uh, we, we've, uh, I've experienced using both in my current and previous role. We, uh, current roles boost previous role was adaptable both for responsive uh, themes uh, and obviously that kind of limits I mean it obviously there's a great deal of good work being done for this database type implementation but if the theme obviously kind of presents it in a way that's unexpected in different devices then that can make good work um, not look so, as good as it was originally intended but that's it's worked really well I'm quite impressed obviously uh, obviously because it's a mobile device if the name is convenience then mobile first if it doesn't work in a mobile it doesn't work sort of thing so obviously it does and um, but obviously also it looks as if it's got applications there's uh, there's a kind of speech that was given by the head of hairdressing at my last place about how um hair and beauty is often seen as a course that is non-academic and uh, this uh, member of staff had went into great detail explaining the, the kind of chemical concepts, the biological concepts and the business management concepts, social media marketing that are involved in hairdressing and 
it's not a, a, a second best or a second choice. It's a, it's a career choice. And I think, you know, using this technology in this way really kind of underpins that and suggests you'll be you'll be using technology now because you'll be using it in your business, you'll be promoting your, your salon via social media, you'll be managing your accounts, doing your tax returns, which is, of course, all digital now. Um, so, I mean, there's obviously that gap that any new solution like that says, oh, I, I don't do digital. And it's not, obviously it's becoming clear that that's not an excuse that every walk of life, every kind of profession, requires that and I think it's it's a good solution to a, a problem that's existed for a while. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. And in terms of the student feedback, uh, do they uh, take it like ducks to water? Do you have to hold their hands in order to get them to use it? And I'm quite interested as well, how many choose to give the audio uh, feedback rather than the, the, the typing and the writing? I would say about a third choose to do audio, which surprised me because I yeah. thought it'd be a lot more choosing to do audio. Um, it depends your student group. If you've got a particularly young student group at the younger level, they tend to not like to do audio. They tend to not like to do that much written either. So feedback's really basic. But that's part of the training. You're, you're building on, you know, teaching them how to evaluate their work. So it's just encouraging them. We, we don't give them an option. You know, I think if you give students an option, so it's not an option to do it paper. We're a paperless course. So when they sign up, they know it's paperless. They, they have to sign in to, to know that they will use their devices for college, their personal devices, to take the photographs, to upload learning, you know. So we make sure that they have all that on their home screen. And, uh, um, and because it's not a choice, and I think the way we sell it to the students, we actually never have a problem with it. They'll all embrace it and run with it because... That's the way they get through their course. Yeah. Well, a, a note from uh, of caution from Gordon in the chat there regarding students seeing each other's pages. Have you had the personal experience of that? No. We, we, the, the, in the settings of your Moodle and your databases, they have to. I mean, we only allow them to upload one to each database. Okay, because they only need one assessment covering the range. So we design the databases to cover the range. Like um, if it's um, colour, it might be like a solid colour or, you know, like partial colour highlights or something. So it's only one entry per database. So what we do when we set it up, we, we, we set it up in the, the, the settings that they have to have 10 entries before they can view anyone else's. So we never have that problem. Yeah, the, the, the comment I was making there was really for, for anyone new trying this out, was to make sure they'd thought about that issue because you don't want the student to be able to see each other's no. uh, assessments. Yeah. But, but yeah, you, you just do something like insist that the students have got to put in 30, 30 assessments of their own before yeah. they can see anyone yeah. else. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's no way they can achieve it within the, the lockdown period. And, and if you're working with your IS team, you know, and you've got a good IS team, you know, they, they give you all that information and advice, you know, and to think about things like that. So. Okay. Excellent. We're coming up near the half an hour mark, so I just want to ask if there's any final questions or comments before we wrap up this formal part of the virtual bridge. Just one quick question, Margaret. Um, so about the audio feedback, how, how did staff take to using that element of the course? Were they equally as happy, like a third of them, <laughs> to give yeah. audio feedback back to the students? When we initially started it, we didn't have audio feedback in because it wasn't available because we're talking about six, seven years ago. And then when it came in, students didn't, staff did embrace that and they started to use it. But when you're working with really large student groups and there's only so much you can see in an evaluation. So then the staff asked if I could put in like the drop down, the select menu. And they're using that just now because it's quicker. It's given the feedback that's um, that's required. So I know in beauty in our area, we do have some staff who are still doing a lot of the oral feedback in beauty. So it is a choice. It is a choice for the staff. And one final thing is just, um, you. I mean, you've used the databases really well for, for an existing thing that you had to do and you've come up with a much better solution and workflow. Um, is there anything that you found that the databases couldn't do or that you would like them to do better? Is there anything still missing for you or to um, be improved upon? The only thing that the frustrates me slightly is if a student if a young student goes in and, and adds the wrong assessment to the wrong database we can't move it to a, another database because it's a standalone a database is a standalone so the student has to redo the database in the right area so that is just spending time with the students and getting them to understand that that they have to look at the criteria of the database to make sure it matches with the assessment that they've just completed Okay, that doesn't sound too bad at all, though. <laughs> so that, 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 that's the only negative that I ha I've ever found right. with using them. 
brilliant, brilliant work. That's excellent. Excellent. So we're coming up to half an hour, Mark. I will merely say to the people in YouTube land, thank you very much for joining us. Please hit the subscribe button and consider joining us live in the Tuesdays and Fridays. I think Tuesday coming up is going to be our own personal one for the veterans. But next year, the virtual bridges will be continuing with CDN and the GISC. So uh, thank you very much for joining. Thank you so much to Margaret Locke for taking us through the Moodle database and how it's been used at Dumfries and Galloway College. Thank you very much all. Bye for now. Okay, thank you. Bye.